In the beginning of the film, we are shown the year 1944. A large-scale war is depicted, with the Nazi army escorting a man whose face is covered with a cloth. The man's friend observes this and wonders where the army is taking his friend. When the cloth is removed, it is revealed that the man is Indiana Jones. The Nazis are actually looting numerous antique artifacts after the war, including some unique items found only at that location. Indiana had come to this place in search of a special knife. One of the Nazi soldiers named Waller spots him and captures him. However, a powerful explosion occurs, allowing Indiana to escape and flee in a car. Two Nazi soldiers unknowingly join him in the car, assuming he is their driver. Indiana remains silent and continues driving. At some point, the Nazi army realizes that Indiana is the one escaping from them. He jumps out of the moving car, eliminating some soldiers in the process, and boards a train. The train is transporting the stolen antique artifacts, and Indiana locates the train car containing the precious knife he sought. However, upon closer inspection, he discovers that the knife is fake, and Waller, his Nazi comrade, had intentionally left it there. Waller possesses an expensive machine created by a scientist, which enables time travel. Indiana's friend, who was captured, had given all this information to Waller. Indiana manages to acquire several valuable antique artifacts before moving to another train car to avoid detection by the Nazis. He spots his friend tied to a chair and frees him, and later encounters Waller in the next train car. Indiana punches Waller, seizes the time travel device, and they both flee the train to avoid capture by the Nazis, who had planned to bomb the train. Witnessing the imminent explosion, Indiana and his friend plunge into a canal, narrowly escaping. They eventually learn that the bomb was not planted by the Nazis, but rather the Americans. Consequently, Indiana fails to obtain the time travel device, as it is now in American hands. The story then transitions to 1969, where Indiana Jones, now a grown-up, works as a professor in a college teaching history. He poses a question to his students, all of whom provide incorrect answers, except for a girl named Helena, who consistently answers correctly. Indiana is delighted by her aptitude and mentions a scientist who developed various inventions, including weapons and time travel devices. Indiana departs from the college, with Helena following him, unaware that they are being pursued by a CIA agent and a group of thugs in a hotel. Among the thugs is an American agent who works for Waller. Waller, concealing his Nazi identity, collaborates with NASA. The scene shifts to a conversation between Helena and Indiana, where she reveals her passion for archaeology and her desire to find the time travel device, specifically the dial. Indiana feels disappointed upon hearing this. They proceed to the college library where Indiana shows Helena the broken half of the device. The scientist who created it intentionally damaged it, recognizing its potential for misuse and falling into the wrong hands. CIA agents arrive, including the agent who was tailing Helena, and they open fire. Helena manages to escape with the device, while Indiana is captured and confined in a van. The van halts due to the crowds gathered to witness Neil Armstrong's first steps on the moon. Taking advantage of the situation, Indiana escapes from the van. He acquires a horse and eventually boards a train to flee. In the future, Indiana reunites with his friend, who had come to meet him. The friend reveals that Helena is a thief who steals and sells rare antiquities in the market, and she has also spent significant time in jail. Hearing all this, Indiana decides that he needs to find Helena because she possesses the valuable dial device. Indiana's friends help him by making arrangements and getting a fake passport for Helena. They also give her their old cap, reminiscing about their past adventures together. The next day, Indiana goes to a hotel in search of Helena and discovers that she is auctioning the dial. As he tries to intervene, Helena's assistant, who is also her friend, stops him, and they manage to escape. Indiana notices Waller, whom he recognizes as a Nazi, and confronts Helena, telling her that she cannot auction the dial. A fight breaks out as everyone tries to gain possession of the device. Eventually, Helena retrieves the device but throws it to her assistant, who then hands it over to Waller. Helena and Indiana escape, but Waller has already fled. Indiana takes an auto rickshaw and tries to follow them, but they are gone. Meanwhile, Waller is confronted by a CIA agent who blames him for the loss of innocent lives. 
Waller, revealing his true identity as a Nazi, confesses his allegiance to the Nazi cause and kills the agent. Meanwhile, Indiana seeks the help of his sailor friend who owns a ship and asks for assistance in searching for the Nazi ship that sank. Helena and her assistant accompany them. During a conversation, Helena asks Indiana what he would do if he had a chance to go back in time, and he expresses his desire to save his deceased son. Saddened by the thought, he continues his journey at sea the next day. They locate the sunken ship, finding several coffins belonging to those who perished in the disaster. While exploring, a whale approaches, and Indiana scares it away. He discovers a box inside the ship, takes it, and starts ascending to the surface. However, men from a whaling ship capture him as he emerges with the box. They take the box, which contains a stone with peculiar inscriptions. Indiana suggests that Helena, being an archaeologist, should examine the stone. Helena tricks everyone by falsely interpreting the inscriptions, causing a bomb to explode. Seizing the opportunity, Indiana, Helena, and her assistant escape to another ship, taking the stone with them. Indiana realizes that the stone is heavy and decides to set it on fire, suspecting there may be something inside. As the stone burns, a golden shield emerges, revealing a message about the whereabouts of the other part of the dial and the burial location of the scientist who created the time machine. The trio heads to the scientist's burial site, while Helena's assistant is captured along the way. Indiana worries about him but is unable to catch up. They encounter men from the whaling ship at the cave mentioned in the shield. The cave contains a gas leak, but Indiana manages to navigate through the cave with the help of the shield's instructions. They reach a river and cross it using a bridge with the whaling ship's men in pursuit. Continuing their journey, Indiana and Helena discover the scientist's cemetery, where they find his skeleton and the missing part of the device, bringing joy to Indiana. Helena examines the pictures on the walls, which depict modern inventions like airplanes and clocks, surprising her as she wonders how the scientist knew about these things. She also examines a clock attached to the scientist's skeleton, which indicates future times. Realizing that the scientist had knowledge of time travel, Helena shares her findings with Indiana, who agrees with her assessment. Suddenly, the men from the whaling ship, led by the boiler, arrive and take the other part of the device from them. The boiler places the clock on the device, activating it. Helena's assistant joins the fight against the boiler, and gunfire erupts. Indiana gets injured and urges Helena to leave, fearing for her safety. Helena and her assistant escape, while the boiler and his men take Indiana with them, heading to the airport. On their way, the boiler reveals to Indiana that he has discovered a place where he can time travel, and now possesses a device for it. He boasts about his fearlessness. Unbeknownst to the boiler, Helena and her assistant are secretly following him. She points out a plane to her assistant and asks if he can fly it. He agrees to try. Helena cleverly boards the boiler's plane with the assistance of a bike, while her assistant follows in the other plane. They witness a bright light in the sky and the ships enter the light, traveling through time. However, their plane loses control upon arrival due to the ongoing war and widespread devastation. Helena attempts to regain control but fails, prompting her to hold on to the plane. Indiana arrives and saves her but they both fall from the plane. Luckily, their parachutes deploy, saving them from the fall. They discover the scientists who invented the time travel machine still working on completing it in the past. In this timeline, the time travel machine does not exist yet. The scientists witness the boiler's plane crashing and rush to remove the clock from his hand, which had been bound. In the present, Indiana explains to Helena that it was all part of the scientists' plan. The dial was programmed to bring anyone who used it back to the same location. Indiana expresses his desire to stay in this time period forever. However, the scientists approach them and hand over the clock and the dial, urging Indiana to take them back to his time. Indiana initially refuses, wanting to stay, but Helena convinces him that it could create problems for them if he remains. She delivers a hard punch to his face, rendering him unconscious. When Indiana regains consciousness, he finds himself back in his own time, the present, where he discovers the clock and the time travel machine that he had used to travel 2,000 years back. Helena appears and informs him that she knows he is alone, 
She then calls his wife, who had previously left him, and they all rejoice in their reunion. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I always love hearing from my viewers, so feel free to leave a comment below with your thoughts on the video or any suggestions for future content. Once again, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.